When I released the first video on this channel in regards to SpaceX's Starship, I never really expected to run into all these different opinions in the comment section. Honestly, I was just curious if anyone thought about the gravity problem like I did. And it seems that as I released more and more of these videos, some people watching them don't understand how serious this problem is. To put it into perspective, the entire race to Mars could end by the mid-2030s if this isn't taken seriously. Maybe by then modern medicine can solve this problem, but we can't bet everything on that. So instead of rambling without having anything to show for it, I spent the last couple of weeks designing a rotating starship, taking into account the engineering and feasibility of such an endeavor. And just a heads up, this crushed my dreams as much as it might crush yours, and more, or less, or it might inspire others to come up with better ideas in order to secure humanity's place amongst the stars. Hi, I'm Ohms, and welcome to Ohms Law. So, this started off as a thought experiment. I was watching a couple of videos on YouTube about rotating Starship, and was just curious to see what that would look like inside a 3D program. Honestly, I chose Google SketchUp just because I wanted something quick and dumb. I never really expected that this whole thing was gonna get super complicated. So at first, I was working with a single truss, about 800 meters in length, with a center starship that's supposed to suspend two starships from either end. I started off from one side just so that I make it easier on myself with the copying. Looking at this ginormous distance, which is the recommended by the way in order to rotate the whole thing at 1 RPM and simulate 1 G, I became extremely doubtful that this thing could hold itself together. And without the center starship, you can forget about a single cable system holding this thing together. It's not like it can't, but being able to correct your trajectory is extremely important. Course correction can't happen with a single cable system, so I ended up going with this truss design while having a center starship for course corrections, and perhaps the solar panels and other stuff. I also needed room for the starship to dock, then be able to fire its engines in order to start the rotation. At this point, looking at other space station designs from other sci-fi movies, I thought that there has to be more trusses tying this thing together, especially near the center whereby the forces would be the most extreme. But again, I wasn't too happy with the design, so I thought I'd ask my dad, who's a mechanical engineer that was part of the team responsible for the tires on the space shuttle. And I'm glad I did that, as he pointed out several flaws with the design, and suggested that I have these four trusses going down, all tied together using other trusses, and let me just say that this was a bitch to build inside of SketchUp. The program isn't really optimized to handle all this, and to tell you the truth, I wasn't doing a great job with it either. But after working on this for a couple of days, I finally had the design I wanted, and my dad even suggested I add an elevator shaft that's suspended from the middle, allowing the crew to travel between the ships. I also had to get the engine in there, and I could only find the Saturn engine on Google SketchUp, so it isn't entirely accurate. The wings also I wasn't too sure of, since the design keeps on changing. I also took out all the windows that SpaceX has on every design I've seen. Windows are expensive and dangerous, and extremely heavy. Even on the ISS, they use them sparingly, and even have covers for them in case they need to protect them in an emergency. If this ship is going to Mars, it's not gonna take any risks with multiple windows. They might have maybe three or four, but I don't think any more than that. So I finally got this thing to spin, and looking at it spin inside of SketchUp, which wasn't really easy to do, I had to download a few plugins to have everything working, but at first impression, I was baffled. I mean, even at 200 meters away from the center, and spinning at roughly 1.5 RPM, this thing feels gigantic and terrifying. Can you imagine 100 tons on either side spinning like this? I just sat and stared at it for a while, Obviously, I had to get a few solar panels in there. I tried to stick with the ISS design and not get too creative with this. I'm assuming the large truss structure would be lifted into orbit using the starships, with these three starships aligning together after they have reached terminal velocity. In order to power at least one of these starships, we're going to need all of these solar panels, and I couldn't even imagine having them spinning on the structure or on either starship, as that would decrease the payload capacity. The center starship could also be used for zero-g experiments and activities. You could even use it as a storage unit of any kind. The second starship could also act as a backup vehicle or could carry a hundred tons worth of cargo. 
Of course, to get all this into space and on its way to Mars would be impossible using current chemical rocket technology, even for SpaceX. This thing needs to be propelled using the thermonuclear engine, or the payload capacity needs to be significantly reduced in order to account for all this. So, these three starships would need to take off from Earth independently. Obviously, the truss system would have to be assembled in orbit ahead of time, and they can't really leave orbit tied together, as that would put immense stress on the truss system should one of the starships fire incorrectly or at a slightly different time. Even the slightest movement here could damage the entire structure. So, reaching terminal velocity independently is crucial. After locking in together and initiating the spin using either thrusters, which would change this design altogether, or the engines themselves, the three starships could travel together towards Mars. If any course correction is needed, minor corrections using the thrusters over a long period of time would work perfectly in a truss system, while a cable system would not remain taut. Any minor misfiring could also cause the cable to snap, while the truss system presented here is more adept at handling such stresses. Once near Mars's orbit, the starships can stop their rotation, disconnect from the center vehicle, which can use its thermonuclear engine to begin orbital insertion. Chemical rockets here won't be able to get us into orbit with the payload we have, so having at least one of the starships with a thermonuclear engine would be extremely beneficial. It could act as the station in space. Honestly, if all three starships could arrive in orbit around Mars, it would be much better. Spending time studying the surface and making sure the weather is right is very important. In any case, the starships can then land on Mars, leaving the center starship in orbit. You could even have two crew members there in order to monitor everything from space and perhaps act as a relay station for communication with Earth, similar to the Lunar Gateway. Overall, I really enjoyed working on this. It took almost three weeks of my time and really inspired me to abandon SketchUp and start taking 3D modeling seriously with Blender. I'm aiming to make a web series with Blender about the first crew heading to Mars on this rotating starship. If you guys are interested in seeing something like that, please let me know in the comment section and subscribe to the channel as that will really help me grow it. I think that in order to get to Mars, we need to start solving the gravity problem. We can't have people suffering terminal damage to their bodies because of the effects of microgravity and zero-g. And I think exploring concepts like this really puts matters into perspective and lets everyone know how difficult it is to live outside of our planet. And I think it gets us to appreciate our home more and work on fixing it. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time with more content about space. And as always, thank you for watching.